When Trump won the election a year ago, one writer, Kurt Anderson, had just finished a book that he would title Fantasyland. It put the birth of fake news, of hyperbole and false claim into a much wider historical context. In it, he argues, America has long been a place where renegades and freaks came in search of freedom to create their own realities. It began, he suggests, with the Pilgrim Fathers and the Salem witch trials and goes right through to the present day. He looks at religious America and what he terms the homespun rebooting of Christianity from Mormons to charismatics. It takes us through New Age quackery and the explosion of self-help manuals and practitioners to the free-for-all era of the 1960s, where he says liberalism ran amok, conspiracy theories flourished, and America believed in UFOs. And it ends here in the current day. Creationist belief, climate change denial, Disneyland, and a sense it must be true if you read it on the internet. All this, he says, helps to explain the rise and acceptability of Donald Trump himself, and in America, where the difference between opinion and fact is crumbling. Well, Kurt Anderson joins us now. And, Kurt, you write um, that Trump, who really took office or at least won the election just as the book was finished, mm -hmm. understood that a breakdown of shared public reality built upon widely accepted facts represented an opportunity. You think he appreciated the fantasy land that you describe in that book. I don't think he would have put it in those words, but I do think he understood it in some visceral sense that now was the time, after having flirted with the idea of running for president for 30 years, that it could work, that that the, the Americans' uh, sense of reality versus fiction had become iffy enough that he had a chance. That's too far-fetched, isn't it? I mean, Trump believes his own reality, surely. Uh, yes and no. He lies. He, and he believes. It's both. And he, he simply has no uh, fixed commitment to factual empirical reality. It's whatever serves him at a given moment, like the ultimate salesman that he is. So when you talk about the history of America, what you build up is a sense that people have been following their own realities for 500 years. Some of that will sound very critical of religion, yes. very unforgiving of um, faith, and of people being able to believe something that is just less dictated than science. I, I am happy. I have nothing against faith and religion as it is practiced in Christendom in most of the rest of the developed world, including the UK and Europe and Australia and the rest. It is the extreme and extravagant religion of various kinds that in which the United States has always specialized and which has made it even more divergent from the rest of the developed world today. And it's not bad in and of itself. It's strange in and of itself. But it, but, but it I think, has led to our politics, where, where an entire half of the country can be persuaded that climate change doesn't exist, for instance, or almost that many who believe that evolution isn't real and shouldn't be taught in public schools, and so forth and so on. Some of those are religious ideas. Some of them are not. But they are all about uh, believing the empirically unfounded and, and improbable and untrue. Yeah, you don't arrive at a conclusion to why America seems to kind of break the mold of being a deeply re religious country and yet a very economically successful one. We tend to see the correlation in the other direction. Well, and, and yes, and we, we, we have been. We have been an exceptional country in many ways. I believe that this work, that this allowing a thousand flowers to bloom and all kinds of fantasies to be engaged and propagated, worked for several hundred years because there was there was a set of establishments in control. It wasn't allowed to go crazy and get out of control, whether it was in religion, where the mainline churches in Protestantism uh, ruled, or and 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 in 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 the economy, where where. Nothing. It, it was when when it, when it got extreme, it was it was brought back. I, I would say in so many different ways, starting in the 1960s, but certainly in the last 20 years, economically, religiously, and in other ways, spiritually, we, so, we have gotten out of control. What would you change, though? You don't want America to stop being free to think no. and believe what it chooses. No, I, I, th th there is no. I mean, no. It, it cannot be fixed by fiat. There is no programmatic. Here's what we. Here are the laws we need to pass. I, I believe, however, that the, 
serious people of all political stripes, conservatives as well as liberals and everybody in between, have to recommit to, to reality. And, and, and they don't have to give up their faith, they don't have to give up their hunches and their superstitions, but they, we have to have a shared set of facts if we're going to have a, a society and a country and an economy that continues to thrive and, as it has. Good, Anderson. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming My in. My pleasure.